Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Black Red Vampires deck as suggested by my supporters on Patreon as it recently got updated with Mark of Baron from the Aftermath expansion, a 3 mana 2-2 two -two Vampire Lord giving other vampires we control plus 1 plus 1. It also has a lifelink and it has Convoke so we can tap some of our untapped vampires to play it which means we can potentially have the start of turn 1 play a vampire, turn 2 play 2 more 1 mana vampires and then Convoke out our Baron on turn 2. And then it also has Madness for 2 and a black which means if we discard Mark of Baron then we can also cast it for its Madness cost. And of course the vampire deck is very good at discarding cards thanks to its many blood tokens. And we've got Voldaren Epicure at 1 mana, at 2 mana there's Blood Tithe Harvester and then even our Vampire's Vengeance leaves behind a blood token. And we also have Castle Dracula aka Voldaren Estate which can make more blood tokens on the cheap if we have a few vampires out. So those are all ways of discarding our Mark of Baron for 1 mana and then we can potentially cast it by just tapping three vampires so that can easily take the opponent off guard if they're not expecting to play around Mark of Baron and then giving the team plus one plus one is great especially in a low curve aggro deck like this one so we're definitely trying to get on the board quickly with all these one drops at one mana we've got two copies of cutthroat contender which is a one one that can turn into a two one if we pay one life can only use this once each turn so it is a bit painful to keep activating it but we can offset it thanks to the life gain from mark of baron and then i'm also including two copies of icker drinker another new vampire that has a life link can also be exiled from our graveyard to incubate two so I'm playing a split of Contender and Drinker. Drinker is much better in the mono red matchups for instance, whereas we prefer Contender if we're up against a more controlling deck where we just care about dealing more damage. And then a four copies of Falkenroth Pitfighter, a 2-1 that can also potentially discard a card and sacrifice a vampire for two mana to draw two cards. So it can also be useful if we're expecting a sweeper effect to cash in some of our smaller vampires to at least draw a few more cards in the process. And then the aforementioned Voldaren Epicure which also deals one damage when it enters the battlefield and then at two mana besides harvester which we can use as removal or just as a nice three two creature to apply pressure we also have four copies of vampire socialite and this is the other lord in the deck a two two with menace when it enters the battlefield if an opponent lost life this turn we can put a plus one plus one counter on each other vampire we control and as long as an opponent lost life each other vampire we control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it so that incentivizes us to play our vampires second main phase and after we've dealt damage so they all pick up extra plus one counters and then at three mana besides our four copies of mark of baron we also have four copies of a dominating vampire and that's another payoff for having lots of cheap vampires in the deck because when dominating vampire enters the battlefield we gain control of target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of vampires we control until end of turn untap it and it gains haste until end of turn so kind of your act of treason effect so dominating vampire can potentially get a large blocker out of the way if we're going wide with our vampires and get a nice attack in can also give itself haste let's say we're curving a one mana vampire two mana vampire dominating vampire on turn three then we'll have three vampires in play so dominating vampire can target itself to gain haste and attack for three so that's also pretty nice but the real wombo combo with dominating vampire is alongside henrika domnathi so let's say we already have henrika on the battlefield and on the first turn we chose to pay one life and draw a card then on the following turn we can play our dominating vampire steal an opposing creature let's say our opponent has one medium-sized creature that we can actually steal and then one very large creature that's too big for the dominating vampire to take control of then we can still steal the smaller creature and then use Henrika's ability where each player sacrifices a creature we sacrifice a creature we just stole with our dominating vampire and the opponent has to sacrifice the creature that's left and I was actually able to pull this off in one of my practice games while testing the deck where I stole a topiary stomper and then made the opponent sacrifice their Atraxa to get in for Exaxes so that's the type of thing you're looking to set up with Henrika and then of course it's also a flying threat to help you close out the game so those are all the vampires in our deck then we've got additional interaction with four copies of duress which is a necessary card to include if you want to have a chance of beating an opposing sweeper effect and there's a lot of sweepers being played right now especially out of the five color domain decks with sunfall so having a timely duress to take those away can make the difference between winning and losing and in the late game you can always discard duress to a blood token so it's not stranded in hand 
And then we also have four copies of Go for the Throat as additional spot removal to clear larger creatures that might be a problem. And then we also have two copies of Vampire's Vengeance, which shines against uh, aggressive decks in the format like Mono Red or Mono White, where we can deal two damage to each non-vampire creature, so it can often be a one-sided board wipe. And we also get to make a Blood Token. And then the Mana Base was also kind of tricky to build, since we want to include some of these lands like Secluded Courtyard and our Voldaren Estate, which are quite nice in a vampire deck. Courtyard not costing us any life to help us cast vampires early on, whereas our Voldaren Estate offers late game utility of making additional blood tokens, gets a discount for each vampire we control, so we can potentially just tap the Voldaren Estate to make a blood token if we have five or more vampires out there, so that can be great to discard lands in the late game, but it is a bit painful, so if you're up against Monorad, you much prefer having Courtyard. Then uh, Sulphur Springs, also necessary evil as a red-black untapped dual land to play early so we can curve out. Black Cliff Cliffs, much preferred since it doesn't cost us any life, and we typically don't need a ton of lands in play since we only have 20 lands total or curve tops out at four but we can easily operate on just three lands in play and then Haunted Ridge is not ideal since it enters tapped early on, so only playing two of those. And then a four basic swamps to help us cast Duress and go for the Throat, since we cannot use our Courtyard and Voldern Estate to make black or red mana to cast some of our non-creature spells. And then the Channel Lands offer additional utility as well. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand could use a second land, but uh, yeah, hopefully we'll find one. There we go. Start with probably an Icker Drinker, and then next turn we can Epicure plus Duress. Or we could get the Socialite going first. Okay, opponent on Green White Enchantments. Kami's definitely a scary one. Probably need to Duress to take away any removal they might have. Play Epicure. It's going to be a while before we get the Socialite going. But yeah, if I just played here, it's not going to end well for me. Opponent's got a Seal from Existence. Calyx to pump the team and Double Naturalist is also going to be difficult to uh, potentially outrace. So we need an effective Vampire's Vengeance. Although Kami is also going to grow in the meantime. Their opponent goes for Calyx first. And we may just have to go for the throat Calyx. What's the alternative? Don't really have a great one. By removing Calyx, we also make sure the Naturalists don't pick up a plus one counter. But now the Kami goes unanswered, so we'll need to first set up Vengeance to clean up Naturalist, and then hope that Henrika can make them sacrifice Kami. So next turn we're locked into casting Vengeance. Question is, do I keep Socialite around, or do I dig for a fourth land for Henrika, which may be more important, even though the added pressure from Socialite could help. Yeah, I think we're digging for land. Okay, so now we can add Pit Fighter to the board, besides Cast Vengeance. And I hope our opponent can't add another creature to the board. Invasion, that's awkward. It's going to make Henrika cost 6. So there goes our plan. And I can transform it right away. Yep, that happens. Well, our best draw is probably just a second Henrika. So that can make them sacrifice, which gets around the protection here. Mark of Baron's not bad either, so can discard it, and then Madness. I 
and find another Mark of Baron. Could convoke it. Or we can just hit for 7 here, which may be better. And then have another Baron lined up for next turn. Bone falls to 5. Calyx can grow Kami some more. Not enough for lethal. And we should have them on the way back. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, our spells lined up perfectly here thanks to that early duress. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one pit fighter. Maybe turn two harvester and then wait until turn three for duress. Opponent's blue white. Now we could pit fighter plus duress, which I don't hate. Although for points on blue-white control, we kind of want to wait until we cast the rest of the turn before they could cast a sweeper. Which uh, would be turn 4 typically. So we can maybe wait on the rest for a turn or two. Uh, it's a Denik instead for now. So it might be more of an Esper Legends deck. Or Soldiers. So I could... Just go for the throat, play another pit fighter, and then next turn have a look with duress. Although for opponents on soldiers or legends, they typically don't have many targets. So yeah, let's go ahead and take out Denik. And add a pit fighter to the board. Can also use a pit fighter's ability to maybe draw more cards. As we see Rafine, and a convenient go for the throat here. So yeah, we're not going to find any targets for duress. So let's just take out Rafine and keep on attacking. Could play the springs to then maybe use a blood token, discard duress. Opponent passing with maybe Artai Resurrected or a Channel Land available. Okay, Henrika could come in handy. So play Henrika, see if they want to counter it. Although, if they do, we can still attack and get in for 4, forcing a trade for Artai. Otherwise, I'm probably better off just uh, drawing a card here. That resolves. So if we attack all out, opponent can take out Harvester, trade for a Pit Fighter. That seems acceptable still. There's Artai, also costs him one life from the caves. Get to draw. And our opponent falls to two. Okay, so next turn we can play Mark of Baron. And we'll see if we can make them sacrifice a creature. Or if we transform instead. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Turn 1 the rest. Turn 2 have a couple options. Let's see what our opponent's working with. So it's a red-green modified creature deck. No 1 or 2 mana plays. Nothing to take with the rest either, which is a little awkward. But go for the throat should be effective. Opponent running out to 1-1 one, one Devastator. So if they play Kodama and hit us with Devastator, they get to search up a land. If we kill Kodama, they have a backup, so that's also not ideal. I think we want to play a 2-mana creature here, so next turn we can go go for the Throat plus Spitfighter potentially. And then I guess we may as well play Socialite, which can attack past Kodama. And then keep go for the throw to maybe answer the Stormseeker. Opponent will get to ramp in the meantime with Devastator and Kodama, which is not ideal. And yep, there's Kodama. Another Duress is not going to help. 
play pit fighter, keep up, go for the throat. Or we could just play another harvester here. Yeah, maybe that's better. Add some more pressure to the board. Can just block the storm seeker if they attack with it. And there's storm seeker. And yeah, we can just trade for storm seeker and pit fighter. Take four. And then hang on to go for the throat for another large creature. So hit for six. Also can't forget about activating our castle to make more blood tokens. Could come up. Ooh, a Simeon Simulacrum. That one's an artifact. Doesn't die to go for the throat. Counters on Kodama. But if we kill Kodama, they can just play a backup. So do I just take six then? The next turn can still attack with a whole team. Opponent likely chumps Harvester with Simulacrum. It will be at five. And then if they bring back Simulacrum, they might put counters on Devastator. So then that turns into a three-powered creature, Simulacrum is plus two, so that would kill us. And that's before we factor in damage from Springs. So I probably have to draw something useful. But if I go for the third Kodama, that doesn't really help my cause. So I think we have to take it still. And then we'll activate our blood tokens and see if we can improve our situation. Buseju could also potentially destroy one of our lands here, but I don't think that's going to be super relevant. Opponent could also play Kodama on defense, as opposed to keeping it in hand. And that's what they do. Okay. So now might be worth casting Go for the Throat on Kodama. That way if I top deck the Dominating Vampire, we can just win the game. Yeah, let's take out Kodama. And then we can use the blood tokens next turn. Courtyard doesn't help. Use blood token, discard the rest and draw. Find another springs. So now probably use castle. Sack another blood token, discard springs. That way we can still cast our dominating vampire without taking damage. And there it is. Play Steel Simulacrum. And that's exactly 12 damage. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. It's gonna be a bit painful with double castle. Now the courtyard helps. Start with Contender and then Likely turn to socialites. Take it from there. Opponent's mono green with Azusa's many journeys, so a ramp deck. Well, glad that we have contender to apply early pressure here, as opposed to a life linking Icker drinker. Attack and pump. Play socialites. And then at some point we can also steal the likeness to get an extra attack in. Another many journeys. Of course also gains life eventually, so that helps in this matchup. And a loom speaker. At least that one doesn't block profitably. And our opponent's down to one card in hand. Okay, Mark of Baron could be nice, especially with a blood token to enable it. So... I could just play Harvester, use a blood token to Madness, and then not attack this turn. Or we can attack for what's essentially 5 and play a Harvester. I think that's maybe better. That way Harvester picks up a plus 1 counter. And then next turn we can worry about pumping the team. 
can also use a harvester to take out some of the opponent's creatures, especially if we make more blood tokens here. And we can maybe surprise Madness the Baron, so our opponent doesn't expect the plus one plus one. Okay, opponent does have an active Topiary Stomper now. So we have a lot of options. So if we want to get a successful attack in, we need to both deal with Stomper and probably want to take out Likeness as well. So it's a complicated turn. So maybe we just go Pit Fighter, Harvester, Discard Baron to Convoke. Sure. Take out Stomper. And then we can just attack with Contender, although a Likeness would still trade for it even with the extra plus one plus one. Yeah, let's just attack with Contender and see if they want to trade for Likeness. Boone's going to sacrifice Reliquary to draw. And then since they took it, we'll Madness the Baron here. Okay. Could have also waited for damage so that the Baron picks up a plus one counter from Socialite instead. Close call. A run and seven is a good one. So at least Dominating Vampire can always steal the Tree Folk no matter how large it gets. Okay, go for the throat can also answer the tree folk. So what are we thinking? Dominating vampire steal the tree folk. And then could also activate the castle just to make a blood token, or we could go for the throat, although might want to keep it to answer the tree folk later. Of course it did shrink down a bit since we have fewer lands than the opponent. But uh, still happy to get an attack in. Opponent's at 15 with three blockers. They'll trade likeness for Harvester, probably for Contender as well. Yeah, we might want to take out a Ren just to kind of force them to jump with one of their creatures to save it, as opposed to going face. And the rest can all attack. Alright, Opponent's not going to save Ren. And then we can trade for Likeness, as opposed to Loam Speaker, I think. That looks good. And then we'll activate Castle to make an extra blood token, while we still have a lot of Vampires in play. Bones at 8. They do get their Tree Folk back, but we can take it out next turn. Ooh, a Defiler, that's scary. Can also use Harvester as removal after making more blood tokens first. Vampire's Vengeance, not the best. So yeah, let's say we activate our castle. It's gonna cost one extra mana. Make a blood token, so now Harvester can take out Defiler. And then... If we uh, go for the throat of the Tree Folk, we should be able to set up a nice attack since they can only use this as a sorcery. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is not the best. Double Epicure. Good sacrifice fodder for Henrika, bit of removal. I guess we'll try it. Definitely not the most aggressive start, but if we draw Mark of Baron, that could quickly change. Okay, the rest can have a look. And our opponent on some sort of 
black white life gain deck it seems with voice of the blessed and veteran do we want to take a removal spell here or do we take a Skrelv's Hive, which we are going to struggle to answer? Although, don't know how much we care about the Hive. I guess it gains life with Veteran by making tokens turn after turn, but then we can just wipe them up with our Vengeance. So, Cut Down and Fateful Absence are the bigger problem cards. Probably take Cut Down since it also answers Henrika for one mana. Alright. So the main potential problem is voice getting large, but go for the throat can answer it. And then vengeance, a great answer to a, a bunch of tokens. So get in for two. I guess we're not doing a whole lot this turn since I'm happy with all the cards in hand. Unless we want to discard Henrika to keep digging. But we should get some good value out of it. So Veteran first, and another one. Okay, so now if we wait for them to play Voice of the Blessed and then cast Vengeance in response to the life gain triggers, we can wipe up their entire board, which I think is the plan. So no Henrika for now, since we need to make sure to answer to the voice. And uh, probably no attacks from Epicures either. Hopefully they haven't picked up anything to change their play. And there we go. Nice of Vampire's Vengeance. Could consider discarding Go for the Throat. Since uh, we've dealt with the voice now. Opponent can bring back a Phantom. And then they'll be tapped out for Henrika. So we can make sure to draw an extra card right away. Yeah, I don't think we need go for the throat anymore. Okay, the rest can take Fateful Absence now. Make sure to draw. Don't think we care too much about making them sack Phantom, or do we? I guess the sacrifice isn't getting any better. So, sure. Otherwise, I can just sack a uh, Might token. Grab Absence. And now if they bring back Voice of the Blasts, we're not too upset. Since they don't have all the life gain synergies to go with it. Okay, so draw with Henrika. Get in for one. Could be more picky with what we play here since we have all these blood tokens. So we could maybe discard Contender and see if we find something better. And then next turn I'll still have enough blood tokens to take out Voice with Harvester if necessary. Okay, that's better. So Enrica about to transform to apply more pressure. Pilgrim was a good one. So now voice grows. Still within range of Harvester. So I'm fine to block here. Opponent reconsiders, goes face. So if their creature dies, then we lose one life and they gain one from Phantom. But that would still leave voice as a 4-4. Four, four. Okay, now Dominating Vampire can steal an opposing creature. Sadly, we've already used the Sacrifice mode on Henrika. Could have been fun. So now probably steal the Pilgrim and still take out voice. And attack with the rest. Boon falls to five. K 
Okay, Shadow Right Priest pumps clerics, including the uh, Phantom here. And then next turn I could potentially use it to search up something scary, like even a Toxril, which I've seen before. Block here. So we might have to use Harvester to take out the Shadow Right Priest. Okay, Mark of Baron was excellent. Still probably safest to take out the Shadow Right Priest. And then attack all out. They might put Pilgrim in front of Epicure. And then a nice instant speed madness. We'll get him. And besides trading for Pilgrim, we should just deal lethal damage. Okay. And there we go, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is almost great if we had an untapped Black Red land instead of Haunted Ridge. But I guess we'll keep and there's always a chance we pick one up on turn one. So I think I'm going with the tap land here over turn one Pit Fighter so we can double spell our one drops next turn or maybe play Socialite first. Otherwise, next turn is going to be wasted doing nothing, unless we draw the appropriate land. Okay, so can name Vampire, play two one drops. Probably lines up better for opponent as removal here. And then next turn we can also look into maybe Convoking Baron. I think the plan is attack with Pit Fighter, then play Socialite, and then Convoke Baron. And then now we've got a good amount of pressure, even if they kill one of our lords. Hope to dodge a sweeper. Didn't get to check with duress this time around. So it's going to be a tapped storefront. So yeah, if they play a creature, we can answer it. Well, there's a timely duress. So can attack first. Because if our opponent has, let's say, spot removal and sweeper, if we attack first, they're probably just going to take it, planning to cast a sweeper next turn, whereas if we cast the rest second main after attacking, they may have taken the damage already and then still cast a spot removal afterwards. So that's my reasoning here. There's no 4 mana for a Wandering Emperor to worry about. Damage happens, and yeah, hopefully they've got one sweeper in hand that we can now take away. And uh, should be able to pay for a conditional counterspell. And yeah, opponent had Wandering Emperor at 4 and a Sunfall at 5. Even a Path of Peril, which they can now cast. Which would wipe everything except Mark of Baron. So, I mean, I have to take Sunfall. Opponent can still Path of Peril. And then we're left with a Mark of Baron. So that's not ideal. So I guess we can use the Pit Fighter here to sacrifice and draw. So they had two sweepers, unfortunately. So let's use Pit Fighter and then discard to go for the throats. Sacrifice doesn't matter too much at this point, contender. Okay, can play Icker Drinker, but it would just die to Path of Peril. It is still useful if our opponent plans to, instead of casting Path, goes for Wandering Emperor, which could exile Mark of Baron and then gain two up to seven. Then I might want the extra pressure here. And then if they do decide to cast Path, we can still at least get some value out of the graveyard. There's also Crucible for added pressure at instant speed, so we'll see. Alright, opponent does go for Path. So yeah, now with uh, Crucible we should have lethal. Get 
get in for five exaxes. Awesome. So yeah, the duress is showing to be incredibly valuable in these matchups against the more controlling decks in the format that plan to stabilize the board with a timely sweeper like Sunfall. And even in matchups where the opponent's not playing any non-creature spells like Blue-Eyed Soldiers or Esper Legends, for instance, you can always discard the rest to a blood token, so it's not too much of a liability to have it in the deck. So yeah, I've been pretty pleased with this new addition of uh, Mark of Baron that can let you convoke it and madness it at instant speed, so it's a pretty unique effect to have access to. I don't think it quite pushes the deck into ranked playable territory. It's still not the most powerful deck overall. The individual card quality is not super high, but it's definitely a fun deck if you're completing your black red daily quest or you just need to attack or take out a few creatures. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.